Hello family and welcome to the August 17th edition of our boring meditation stuff. This conversation we're having about meditation and how it applies to our crippling anxiety, um, perhaps universal crippling anxiety at the moment. I tried moving back a little bit today uh, to see if it would make my S's less sharp. I think maybe, maybe it will. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm still on my ridiculous stool, so don't worry about that. Uh, yesterday I promised I would talk about the matrix and the sort of implicit um, consequent topic of the matrix paradox, which is um, it's adjacent to this idea of the simulation hypothesis. So how do we know we are not in the matrix? Ooh, um, so the matrix uh, is slightly different from the simulation uh, hypothesis in the sense that the idea of the matrix, at least as far as the movie franchise is concerned, is sort of predicated initially, at least, on this idea that um, your brain and to some extent your nervous system are really in charge of the whole deal. Um, that there's not much else going on beyond that and that really your entire experience is, um, to put it the way Morpheus puts it, uh, electrical impulses inside your brain. So, you know, you eat a piece of steak and then an electrical impulse goes off in your brain and you're having the experience. Um, this, as it turns out, uh, unlike the simulation hypothesis where you start getting into these um, sort of abstract notions of consciousness as data or consciousness as processes, and you um, start to wonder if it's possible for those processes to be uploaded to, uh, to Google or to um, some other computer system, the matrix uh, sort of leans on the body which is more helpful. So in The Matrix, um, at least the first movie, all the consciousnesses within The Matrix are still alive in their own body. And so this gives you uh, a sort of clue as to how and when and why um, The Matrix might fail. And um, it may be explained within the movie in terms of like some a consciousness rejects the matrix or something like that. And so those people uh, like get out. But um, this idea it, it is probably quite a bit more universal than that. It wouldn't be an exceptional case. And the idea is that um, a human being can turn its attention inward. And so if you follow the sensations of the body, you will at some point um, get to this sort of uh, feedback loop, which is happening within the body. And that feedback loop is essentially this relationship between uh, the mind and the body, not necessarily the brain and the body, because those are, are actually different things. Um, the brain does not encompass the entirety of the mind. Um, I guess you'll have to take my word for that at the moment. But again, through experience, you can kind of know that for a fact. Um, but even scientifically, even by way of experiment, we know that there are measures of consciousness, however primitive that we've seen um, through experimentation, which exist outside the brain entirely. Um, and that's an interesting thing to note. Um, so if what you do in the matrix is you jam a big needle in the back of someone's brain and you hope to manage this world of electrical impulses, um, when you begin exploring, uh, so this, this whole mind-body construct, right? 
I said it was kind of a recursive loop. And what ends up happening is you start exploring the body first. So whether that's the breath, so you can explore the breath, as boring as it is, <laughs> um, or you can start exploring the body. Uh, or in the case of a Vipassana course, 10 day Vipassana course, you would explore the breath first for three, three and a half days, and then you would explore the body for the, re the remaining um, days of the course. And what you will find is that this exploration of the body is sort of a, a back door to the mind. And so you end up actually exploring uh, the consequences of the mind's activities in the body, but the body also feeds back to the mind, right? We touch a hot stove, we burn our hand, we learn a lesson. Um, the, the body is constant, I mean, this is an incredibly naive example, but I mean, it's a good go-to example of like, oh, okay, toddlers, how do they learn, etc. Um, human beings are learning in a similar way, not nearly so gross, but all the time through our body. So our body is teaching us things and then our mental states are teaching our body things. And this is feeding on itself, right? And you'll feel, if you are feeling anxious, you know it, at least partly, through the body. You know it physically. Um, anxiety is causing us a certain physical trauma. And we know that in our body. And we know that at a very gross level. We know that at the, the level the toddler knows not to touch a burning stove, right? Um, anxiety is there. Well, okay, that's one piece of information, like one reified piece of information. There's, there's not much you can do with that. But as you start exploring the body, you start to kind of pull apart this loop, right? You start turning it backwards. Um, and so as you start uh, unzipping it, unpacking it, this relationship between the mind and the body, by going to the body first, you will start to see exactly how these two things interoperate. And to go back to the matrix, if we were in the matrix and the matrix were just this uh, message bus, right? Sending and receiving signals with like the electrical impulses in our brain. Um, we would actually get past the message bus at some point, right? By, by way of this process. And it doesn't take very long and it doesn't, it doesn't take too much of this kind of exploration before you would know, oh, okay, actually like, my body doesn't feel like it's in New York. My body feels like it's in a, you know, an egg full of slime or <laughs> whatever it was in, in the case of the original Matrix movie. Um, and you would probably wake up to that or you might become consciously aware uh, that you weren't really in New York. You, uh, maybe you would go schizophrenic. Who knows? Like it's hard to say exactly what the consequences would be, but it feels... Um, almost impossible to trap uh, human consciousness in that particular way by going after the body, trapping the body. Um, so it seems very likely that we are not exactly in the matrix. Um, we are certainly in a sort of fantasy, uh, in a sort of hallucination, um, but that's sort of self-perpetuating right by our emotional state and everything else so um, we we know this as well uh, that when we wake up and our emotional state is uh, particularly negative or particularly positive the entire world can change or seem to change to reflect that um, and that is how uh, we hallucinate this reality, right? How we exacerbate the hallucination. Um, and we can talk about that more perhaps later, but um, that's probably enough on the matrix for today. Uh, I hope everybody has a good week. Um, you can always go back and watch the original matrix. It's still a pretty good movie. Uh, they take you through a really kind of introductory, uh, you know, crash course on, um, on the simulation hypothesis or a version thereof. 
uh, pretty quickly. It's impressive what they managed to do in two hours, right? Like each scene is meaningful. So <laughs> uh, this is a good movie. We, we rewatched it recently. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves. I hope you're all taking care of everyone around you. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.